Welcome folks, thanks for sticking with us. So last week we ended our series on the Army of the Potomac and their service throughout the war. We ended discussing the U.S. Colored Troops. So today we will begin our next series that will be covering the opposition to the Army of the Potomac. And that would be the Army of Northern Virginia, better known as Lee's Army. So before we continue, let me uh, invite our new viewers to please subscribe. I have new episodes up daily, and we love to discuss history in a friendly, united community. Please like, share, and comment. So today we'll be discussing why it was needed to have an Army of Northern Virginia. And let's begin. So the Army of Northern Virginia actually did not exist when secession hit the South in the spring of 1861. Uh, this was simply because in late 1860 to April 1861, Virginia had not yet seceded. Virginia was in fact trying to act as a moderator between the federal government and what is commonly known as the Cotton States. The Cotton States were the Deep South States, those that did not border the North. So this would be South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, and Louisiana, all of which seceded throughout the winter of 1860 to the spring of 1861. Now, originally, again, no violence beyond burning effigies of Lincoln had happened. And states like Virginia, North Carolina, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Missouri, and Maryland did not want to overreact and still use politics to fix the issues. However, in Montgomery, Alabama, the new government had been formed for the Confederation of the Cotton States. They named Jefferson Davis, the former Secretary of War of the United States of America, as their president. The convention and president then called for 100,000 men to defend the new nation. Across the South, federal troops had been slowly kicked out of their posts, but one position was still being held tight. Fort Sumter in Charleston, South Carolina. So the 6,000 men in the city were placed under the command of Pierre Gustave Toutant Beauregard, a Louisianan who graduated second in his class at West Point in 1838. After negotiations with federal troops at Fort Sumter failed on April 12th, 1861, Beauregard ordered to open fire. 34 hours later, they would surrender the fort. Abraham Lincoln then, in response, would call for 75,000 volunteers to suppress what had now become a violent rebellion. Immediately, Virginia, North Carolina, Arkansas, and Tennessee seceded, mainly in opposition to what they viewed as the president's, in quote, hasty calling of troops. On May 9th, 1861, the capital of the Confederacy was moved from Montgomery and put in Richmond, Virginia. Quickly, two armies were formed, the Army of the Shenandoah, commanded by a Virginian named Joseph Johnson. The majority of his force was made up of men from Virginia, Georgia, and Mississippi. Then the Confederate Army of the Potomac, commanded by PGT Beauregard. His force made up similarly, but also many South Carolina units. However, the force only numbered at about 34,000 men because the Confederate states did not wish to send all their militias and units to fight. The two forces would fight side by side against the Union Army of the Northeastern Virginia at the Battle of First Bull Run on July 21, 1861. In October of that same year, the Confederate War Department decided to reorganize the districts in Northern Virginia. The districts were the Valley, Potomac, and Aquia. Johnson would expand the districts to also include the districts of Norfolk and the peninsula. Doing this, he actually would take Beauregard and the army and his army of the Potomac and Johnson's own army of the Shenandoah to make a large force while Jefferson Davis attempted to centralize the military. The reason behind expanding and creating one large army was because the Union army had reformed as well at the same time and the Confederate High Command did not want to have a conflict of orders. So what would happen instead is the now Department or Army of Northern Virginia would answer to Joe Johnson, but they would, in a certain way, have autonomy in their districts. At this point in the war, they were not looking to invade. These were 
at the time, strictly defensive forces. Now, I've mentioned a few times the issue of centralization. Now, the reason for the secession, of course, was the southern states felt their rights to slavery was threatened. But there was a deep-rooted issue, which was states' rights. Now, again, what set off the war was the idea of states had the right to own slaves. But in the South, they were supporters of state power over federal. This was the divide between men like Alexander Hamilton, a New Yorker, and Thomas Jefferson, a Virginian, that set off the entire two-party system in the United States in the first place. So many men, specifically a former vice president named John C. Calhoun, who believed the states did indeed have rights over the federal government. So when the Confederacy was established, it was established with states having more power than the federal government. Now, in this scenario, you had states like Virginia, who had no choice but to send all its militia to defend the state. But then a state like South Carolina, who in the early war wasn't being harassed as much, so they kept their troops at their state. Which, when you're president like Jefferson Davis, and your main duty is the defense of your nation, it makes things much more difficult when you don't have troops. So with this issue, they had no time or room for conflicts of orders. And so O. Johnson's creation of the Department of Northern Virginia, which now became the Army of Northern Virginia. Again, the force was in no way meant to be an offensive force, honestly, ever. It was established to defend choke points in Northern Virginia. That's why those specific regions were selected. If an attack came, the one district would hold long enough for another or all the other districts to support. Or in the case of someone like Stonewall Jackson and his Valley Campaign, take on the enemy on their own. So this will be the end of our intro to the Army of Northern Virginia. Our episode, our next episode will be on Joseph Johnson and his life. Then after our video, we will be on the Valley and the Peninsula campaigns in which Robert E. Lee will become commander of the Army of the Potomac. I mean, in Northern Virginia against the Army of the Potomac. Thanks as always for watching, friends. Please, if you're a new viewer, subscribe. I hope I earned it. Everyone, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment. You know, I love my comments, and we'll see you in the next one.